Hi. In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to create a basic combine assault in a way that will allow the NPCs to use a physics object as a ramp to go from one height level to another. My initial idea was to have the player on the ground and two combine soldiers on a higher level uh, with this plank on the edge. Uh, the plank would be pushed over by an explosion which would form a ramp, uh, and the ramp would be used by the player to advance to the upper level. Now after the ramp was knocked over, uh, the plan was for these two combine soldiers to, to run and jump down using the ramp. The biggest problem with this plan is that combine can't really jump. They can repel, but that's about as athletic as they can be without extensive AI scripting, uh, or at least some choreography and face poser. Now I'm not sure I, I could be wrong about this, uh, so let me know if there's a better way. Uh, but in any case, the default combine AI doesn't know how to handle sudden changes in height. If you set up an assault sequence like this, the NPC won't be able to proceed past point one, so he'll abort the assault sequence. The problem in this scenario is that the difference in height doesn't have to be very large. Even if there's a small drop at the foot of the ramp, an NPC won't know how to handle it. So one solution is to just forget about making the NPCs jump. Now we could change them to antlions, but let's assume that antlions wouldn't fit in this environment. Uh, the combine soldiers will just run down the ramp. But we still have the problem I just described, uh, that NPCs can't step off the foot of the ramp unless it's very close to the ground. Because there is some amount of unpredictability in the way that physics will move the plank, uh, we can ensure that the NPC will be able to run down the ramp. So to solve this problem, we can use two separate ramps, one for the player and one for the NPC. Uh, the first ramp, the, the plank that's knocked down, will let the player climb to the upper level, because the player is capable of jumping but we'll only make it look like the NPC is running down this ramp. Uh, for the NPC, we'll create a second static ramp that the player can't see or collide with. Uh, and its constant position will ensure that the NPC can always find its way down. We'll put it more or less in the same place as the knockdown plank. So I have a basic uh, room set up here, and the player just spawns on this observation platform for the time being. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and create the NPC uh, Combine Soldier and we'll call that Combine Test Guy and under the flags we'll set him to Efficient so he doesn't uh, attack the player and get sidetracked and now we can go ahead and create the ramp so we're going to use a uh, tools texture called NPC Clip uh, this will make the ramp invisible um, and it won't collide with the player but it will collide with the NPC so basically it just gives the, the pathing AI uh, a, a way to get to the ground. So using the vertex manipulation tool we can go ahead and first of all make it a ramp and then selecting these top two we can merge those vertices together uh, so that it's even with the ground and then do uh, something similar on the top so that it's flush with the second level. So there's our ramp. And now we can set up the uh, assault sequence. So we'll have a rally point and the uh, logic or the AI assault goal and two assault points. We can call the second assault point assault test point two and the first one assault test point one uh, and the uh, rally point assault test rally and then assault test goal. So um, we'll link these together and we'll set this delay to 0.2 so that the guy doesn't stand there for 3 seconds before moving on and we'll link the two points together. Now for the rally point uh, we'll set the first assault point to 0.1 and under the outputs we'll add uh, on arrival so that when the NPC arrives at that point uh, We'll target the goal and tell it to begin the assault. And we'll set the uh, the combine soldier to be asleep by default and ignore enemies. So he'll he'll wake up when we tell him to. And then under outputs, we'll make it so that when he wakes up, uh, he'll proceed. He'll uh, activate the assault. So on wake, target the assault goal and activate. And over here uh, on the player, we'll use the trigger tools texture and create a trigger brush to wake up the NPC. And we'll 
press Control T, tie this to a trigger once, and apply that. And then under Outputs, we'll create a on trigger event. We'll target the NPC and tell him to wake up. All right, and uh, one more thing on the on the goal entity. Uh, we also need to set the uh, the NPC to target to combine test guy. So now we can compile the map and see how it runs. Okay, uh, that works pretty well. So now we can go ahead and make the brush that we'll use as the plank. So we'll go ahead and pick a texture, any brush texture, this wood will do. And uh, we, can find, uh, we can find the length of this ramp with the Pythagorean theorem, just get the square root of both of the sides squared. So the length is 343. So we'll just make a, a brush that's about that height with a little bit of extra. And uh, we'll just move that into place. And then press Control T and tie that to a Funk Fizz box. This just turns it into a, an object that physics can act upon. We'll call it a uh, fizz box plank and change the material type to wood and see how that works. So in order to keep the plank from just flying away if we can use a physical constraint. And if you've ever uh, played Gary's mod, you can do many of the same things with a hammer. So we're going to make an entity that's called uh, uh, Fizz Ball Socket. And we'll just leave this out to the side for now. Uh, the location is important, that's where the actual constraint will be. But um, you can see there are two entities that it requires, that it uh, constrains together. So we'll pick the first one, the plank, and we'll name this. Uh, fizz ball socket plank and now we need to make the second entity um, to tie the the plank to so we'll just create a brush a small brush um, that's the width of the plank and just position it in the center and put it just below the plank. And now we can press Control T and tie this to a funk brush. That just makes it a named entity so that it can be referenced by other entities. So we'll just name it uh, Brush Plank Pivot. And now we can set that to the second entity in the ball socket constraint. So we can just move uh, the ball socket into place. We'll just center it and put it at the bottom edge of the plank. That X is where it centers. And in fact the best place for it is also on the uh, the front edge on the bottom. So now we can compile this.